Hi, I'm Jan van den Neuker. I work for UCB, a Belgium-based biopharmaceutical company specialized in the therapeutic areas of immunology and neurology. Within our team, we work on projects to improve the lives of people living with a neurological condition using digital and technology. I started off with projects in a rare Parkinsonism and evolved since the beginning of this year on projects for patients living with epilepsy. Welcome everyone. With us we have uh, Hans from uh, Biteflies and Jan from UCB. Welcome gentlemen. Thank you. Now in your introduction I both heard you mention uh, the disease epilepsy. Um, can you maybe elaborate on that Jan? Yeah sure. So one in 26 people in the world will ever have a seizure in their life. Imagine a short circuit of the brain that is a seizure and of those people 1% of the global population will develop epilepsy. So it is a quite hidden neurological condition, but with a quite high prevalence, and you might know people in your environment that have epilepsy. Mm. One of the complexities of epilepsy today still is that it's a very hard to diagnose disease with respect to what is the optimal treatment for a patient. And if you look on the longitudinal view, only one, or sorry, one in three patients never get to an adequate treatment. So you still have a quite high unmet need and burden to society. And that's what we really hope to solve for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. And, and how are we going to solve this, Hans? It's a good question. Uh, I think a very important part of, of um, being able to solve this is uh, the ability to, to measure epileptic seizures at home because there's different types of epilepsy. Uh, we all know the common ones uh, where, and, uh, where you have obvious signs of having a seizure but there's lots of seizures where the people themselves they don't even know that they had a seizure so uh, because of nobody knows it it makes it very difficult for neurologists and optologists to treat them so if we can measure seizures at home and actually see how medication works and and being able to um, um, uh, really get the feedback of uh, on the daily life that's a real game changer and neurologists actually have a tool where they can see much better how drugs work how they need to switch uh, people on different medication and hopefully get them much faster uh, to the right treatment. Right, okay, it sounds indeed like a huge game changer. Now, you clearly both have a lot of expertise uh, in the field, so, so I'm very eager to hear how the collaboration looks like. So maybe Hans, can you tell us a bit more? Uh, like you mentioned, uh, and like you mentioned, Diane, of course, uh, UCB is very well known in epilepsy. They're the market leader in drugs for epilepsy, especially for refractory patients. Um, and we've already been working for a long time. I think now it's it's uh, more than five years. Uh, we sm started with a research collaboration uh, to get to know each other, uh, to build up trust, to build up credibility, also to learn from the space, uh, mm -hmm. not only UCB and ourselves, but also with academic partners with the University Hospital of Leuven, the C Catholic University of Leuven. And so we gradually evolved um, um, first uh, to prove that it's possible to measure seizures at home, then to see how that can potentially be used in clinical trials. But actually the last year, we actually shifted gears and we said, okay, this is a tool, this is very promising, we can help patients. Uh, this is interesting for UCB, this is interesting for ourselves. Let's uh, work together to really get this to every neurologist uh, in the world, basically, and get this to every patient. And um, UCB has a huge network, mm. they know the disease, they know practically every neurologist in the world, so uh, learning from them about how epilepsy works in a daily life, but also getting access to neurologists and really learning how can we get this in the field makes a big difference for us. Yeah, yeah I can imagine. Now, now we heard the perspective of, of bite flies. Jan, what is for UCB the advantage of working with bite flies? Well, UCB looks beyond only the drug therapeutics and how they can make a difference in patients life and, and I think like many companies we see a wave of digital transformation coming by and, and in 2019 we decided how can we really make a difference mm -hmm. and that's where the, the collaboration we already had with Biteflies evolved towards how can we really bring it like Hans mentioned to each and every neurologist mm -hmm. because to give you the reference of what they use today in many settings is just paper is just somebody providing a testimonial as a patient or a caregiver. And we believe that to progress 
helping these people, we can do better. And so with the evolution of technology, and Biteflies was actually, in our belief, one of the first and most promising technologies five years ago, and still is today the most leading one and the closest to market to really make a difference. And that's why we continue our partnership, because we're already at, I think, the fourth addendum to the initial contract, because it's really a journey. Technology is not perfect and healthcare is a really complex space, highly regulated. So to make a difference, you need to have that long-term trust that Hans and, and our team have to really come to bringing it to the neurologist for, him, for them really to help patients mm. and really make a difference in shortening the diagnosis, in better analyzing what would be the adequate treatment, but also in the follow-up. Patients are often uncertain once they have a treatment regime that works, if that will continue to work and technologies like the one that bite clients have, patients do not need to come to the hospital. They can wear it at home in a more comfortable setting without the stigma and the burden of complex electrodes on the head, etc. You remove all that for the patient. Mm. So you're also drastically improving the quality of life of these people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, very interesting. So you kind of mentioned this as, as your journey together, as your mission. Uh, how do you see this long-term evolving? Um, so for us, uh, our mission, and, and um, uh, I don't want to speak for UCB and the group of Jan, but it's very much aligned with, uh, with what uh, we both want to achieve is uh, we believe very much in specialized care at home solutions and, 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 and in this case, uh, specialized epilepsy care at home solutions for every patient. Uh, and we have technology, like Jan said, and that can really make a, make a huge step forward. And, um, you know, we want to bring this to every patient and basically with these solutions and with an ecosystem around it, we want to make the life of every epilepsy patient uh, more predictable and actually more livable. Yeah, wow, that's great to hear. Now, it all sounds very promising, very positive, but I can imagine, let's be honest, that sometimes there also must be some difficulties in, in, in working together. Hans, can I ask you? <laughs> <laughs> I'll stay polite. <laughs> Go ahead. No, no, no. No, it's, it's uh, yeah, th there's of course difficulties or, uh, you know, by nature, um, a big corporate uh, and, and used to be as pharma, but in general, big, big companies and, and, and smaller startups and scale-ups, they have a very different DNA. Uh, so um, there's, uh, there's different ways of, uh, ways of working, uh, there's different ways of going forward. And that's okay. The, 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 the thing is, you're not going to fix that. You're not going to um, find one DNA, but you have to be very open about, you know, how do we work, how do you work, how can we find a win-win? Uh, mm -hmm. Because for, for companies like us, there's, there's different levels of certainty, there's different risks that you can take. Um, and actually finding a way how this matches together, where you can leverage the strengths of a big corporate, the strengths of an agile company like ours, is... is, is is very important and this is with communicating. It's yeah. the same with the second thing and that's, the, it, the, the first is related to way of working, but the second is we're talking about digital transformation in general, uh, digital health, digital transformation. Everybody talks about it, but this is a new field. Uh, lots mm. of things are evolving. Uh, when we started five years ago to work together, actually already a lot of things changed also from our point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and in order to be able to be agile and, and to find a common ground in where we want to go, you also have to be open about what are our targets today, what are our targets in five years, in ten years, what are uncertainties and, and if things change. Like for example, initially we, we worked together and we thought about let's integrate this in clinical trials to, to make trials faster. Actually we saw that this can have much more impact if we really bring this to patients. So we sat together, we said actually this is something we want, this is something that UCB wants let's accelerate to that goal. Yeah. And that's only possible in this digital, in this space of innovation to, to be very open and communicative. Um, open, openness, communication, honesty, would you agree? Yeah. Yes, uh, and to add some other topics, um, one thing that Hans didn't highlight is the team that has been working with them has changed over the years. Mm. So together with the objectives, also the people they are having as a stakeholder change, but also the governance models change. Um, when we signed our latest agreement, we very deliberately asked ourselves, who do we want to be to bite flies and who do we want bite flies to be to us? And how should we have that relationship? Do we want to really work closely together hand in hand or do we want to take more distance because that's the more appropriate model? And I think that is one of the key elements why we are in such a long-term and good working collaboration 
despite some, some hiccups maybe along the way, it is really reflecting honestly on where do you stand and where do you go. And at our next joint steering committee that we'll have end of this year, we'll do a retrospective on what have we both learned, experienced, what's each perspective and how do we want to take it for next year. So not just go in an agreement, run it flat and, and hope that everything works fine, but really look in the mirror honestly on who are we, who are they, what do we want from each other and where do we want to be. Yeah. And also from the joint steering committee point of view, there's only three people from our end UCB in that. We very deliberately made it a really small group to ensure that we're not strangling a partner like Biteflies with our methodologies, our processes, our regulatory uh, and compliance activities, which might be unsuitable for what they do. Yeah, yeah, that's a great tip, I think. Having a dedicated lean and mean account team that definitely helps also uh, clear communication. Okay, now maybe to close off with, would you have like one uh, final advice that you could give to, to scale-ups and, and corporates who are maybe considering uh, corporate partnering? What about you, Jan? Let's start well, with you. Uh, let me start from the perspective of, for a scale-up, what does it mean to come to uh, a corporate? Um, what we see and we, we have the luxury that companies come to us to assess them is do not believe that you know what the partner wants. Come in with an open mindset, ask the right questions and try to find where a complementary model might work. Very rarely there will be a perfect match. In fact, I don't think I have ever seen, sorry Hans, <laughs> a perfect match even with Biteflies. But there might be strengths that really make a difference and where the objectives are aligned even though the approach might be slightly different. And I think that's really the, the core thing. Do not believe that you know. From a corporate point of view, to take the other angle is, if you want to go into the adjacent space or even in the transformational space, know that it's a high risk space. And take the mindset that maybe a bit blunt as a statement that it's already lost money from the get go, but that it has maybe a potential either for the organization to learn great things, either to come with really innovative things that might help with secondary benefits. It, can, it might increase your brand value. It might motivate people to join your company because it does employer branding. It might learn new things. It might even create friendships with people you didn't know. And it might be good advisors for your corporate career. So there might be secondary benefits in that adjacent and transformational space which from the get-go might not have a fully closed business case, but might really help your company forward. Yeah, and that has great added value. What about you, Hans, maybe to close off? Um, it's, it's complementary to what Jan has mentioned. Is, 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 um, um, as, a, as a company, you don't want to go for a quick win. Uh, you know, there's big corporates and it, it seems like, oh, it's, it's good to go for them because uh, they, they have deep pockets and we can do a project and we can get some revenue. But I think it's not a, good, not, not a good strategy to just go for a quick win, to just go for a short proje uh, project for the sake of we can get some money out of it. Uh, you really need to try to find to which extent is it aligned with, with strategy, even if it's not entirely clear, even if it can change. But it's much more important that the thing that you want to do as a startup, that it actually can make a difference and, and can impact the company as well, because that will make so that on the long term, they stay invested in it. It's not necessarily, and it can be secondary that it's interesting for marketing, etc. But if it's only that, it's a short-term win. And once the marketing thing was there, it ends. You really want to tap into the strategy to, to a target that is very much aligned with the target and the mission of the company to build up a long-term um, collaboration, long-term partnership, because Yes, uh, you know, there might be benefits and, and, and money is one of them, but you also have to invest in it. You have to invest time, you have to invest effort. And so if, if you're not careful, it can be more distracting and it's, it's, it's not good for a company to just go for the short, yeah. short win. Go for the long-term partnership, the long -term. make sure you're aligned. Uh, but it's basically the same what Jan is saying. Great, great to hear. And I think very insightful as well for those listening here. Uh, <laughs> to this. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time and best of luck with your common journey. Thanks, Thanks a lot. <laughs>